Welcome to the FL Studio 12.1 update. We've had a ton of feedback about what you did and didn't like about FL Studio 12. Yes, we've been listening. So let's dive straight in to see what's new. First up, the channel rack. From the menu, there's a new option, Show Mixer Track Selectors. We'll use the Alt plus M keyboard shortcut, and they do just what you'd expect. Allow you to set Mixer Track Routing from the channel rack. Left click and drag vertically to set. It's the same control that's on the channel settings. You can auto route by clicking Track. The selectors give you a much better overview of complex projects, or ones you just haven't seen in a while. You'll notice the icons for generators that don't create audio. These are audio clips, and that's a MIDI out. You get the idea. Another issue we got plenty of feedback about was how the step sequencer interacted with the piano roll in the background. Let's open a piano roll and fill it with some steps. So people would delete the steps and later open the piano roll for that channel, and then wonder where these grey, actually muted, notes came from. The reason for muting deactivated steps is it allows you to make edits to step volume or panning and then keep this data in the background while you experiment with various step patterns. This is how the graph editors used to work, which were lost when we integrated the step sequencer fully with the piano roll. But that caused a lot of confusion, so we added the option Mute Remove Steps. That's off by default, so Step Sequencer Editing doesn't leave muted notes behind in the piano roll, as you can see. Yes, and we've heard you about the graph editors too. We'll look at adding those back in a future update. But for now, use the underlying piano roll. Next up, the mixer. One of the first things you'll notice is that you can actually read the hint values and peak meter labels. Well, we assumed you were mixing with your ears, but it seems we were wrong, so now you can tweak and read until your heart's content. Since we're on the topic of making things easier to see, we've added the mixer menu option, view lines between mixer tracks. This adds subtle separators to help with eye tracking up and down a mixer channel, and it works across all mixer modes. I think I heard some users spitting coffee last time I opened this menu, and they saw the colourful mixer option. Yes, we've listened again, and have three colour levels. I'll select low, and you can see the colour now spills down the entire track. View colourful mixer medium, and things get brighter. And for the circus lovers among you, we have view colourful mixer high. Oh man, it looks like an explosion in a paint factory. But you asked, and we listened. Let's just turn that down before the neighbours start complaining. By the way, when the mix is focused, Ctrl-S now saves projects again. It was saving mixer state. Use Ctrl-Shift-S for that in future. OK, on to plugin management. Oh boy, yes, we heard you like the More button, so it's back. And it's better than ever. Clicking it opens a new and improved plugin favouriting, searching and selection window. Let's search for Morphine. Double clicking it, will add it straight to the channel rack. By the way, the three dashes mean the plugin is routed to the master. I'll click and drag to set it. Don't forget the auto routing function on the track button. Okay, so back to the more plugins button. As before, you can quick favorite by selecting these switches here. The plugins will now show under the default add plugins locations. We'll have a look at those in a moment. Before that, you can also open the Plugin Manager, which is now the heart of all VST management. Normally, you would start scan with Verify Plugins Selected, and plugins will be tested and categorised, as you can see to the right. 32 versus 64-bit, Generator or Effect. Verify scans are important as they simplify managing your plugin database. As before, you can set an unlimited number of custom VST install locations with the Add Path button. So, assuming you've scanned and favorited your plugins, let's have a look at where you can find them. First, the Add menu allows you to add to the channel rack or to the mixer effect slots. Remember the Verify scan makes sure FL Studio knows what category plugins are. There's the More button again. You can click the Plugin Picker icon, then drag and drop. 
there's the plus button of course, and the FX slots menus, and you can click and drag from the plugin database in the browser. By right clicking the plugin database category, you can access Refresh Plugin List Fast Scan to find newly installed plugins, or you can open the plugin manager. Speaking of the plugin database, just a reminder the first two categories are your favourites, and there's a video link in the description for more on managing plugins, favourites, and creating icons. Any new or updated plugins? Absolutely. First up, we have the Video Player 2 so you can play video in sync with FL Studio's playlist. Use it for creating music soundtracks and effects or foley in time with video clips. It's a complete ground up rewrite of the original and now supports all open source video formats, including AVI, MOV, MPEG, WMV and more. There's SMPTE or SUMPTE display support, and more as covered in the video tutorial I'll link in the video information. Next up we have some great new free instrument packs including four acoustic drum kits and our Steinway Grand Piano. Let's start with FPC and the drums. The kits are available from the right click option on the preset selector. There you can load the new funk, jazz, metal and rock kits. Let's check them out. The Steinway Grand Piano is clean and pristine. You can never have enough pianos and this one is beautifully recorded in stereo. It's sure to be an instant hit with the piano stalkers among you. Select it from the Packs, Instruments, Keyboard folder. Let's preview. And as that's the extent of my keyboard skills, let's import an expert. Awesome. Patcher. New for Patcher is the VFX keyboard splitter. This allows you to split the piano roll or keyboard zones into 16 separate outputs. Zones are controlled by envelopes for maximum flexibility. This preset splits the keyboard into three zones and so three outputs. The quickest way to set custom keyboard splits is to open the Patcher preview keyboard, select manual mapping. I'll just reset the default. Then start from the left, selecting where you want to split the keyboard. Easy. You can even create custom velocity curves per zone. Let's see the keyboard splitter in action. First, velocity. Here we're using two velocity zones to create a crossfade between instruments. And 
why not throw in a bass? Finally, the typical use of splitting the keyboard across separate instruments. The last new plugin for this update is the XYZ controller. This allows you to generate three controller outputs. Its vectorial scalable interface makes it perfect for multi-touch control. Use the mouse wheel or pinch zoom to control the z-axis. Finally for now, FL Studio 12.1 adds native support for Novation's Launchpad Pro. Don't forget to check the video information for details on all the things we've covered so far. Thanks for your feedback on FL Studio 12. We are listening. So why not download the 12.1 update and let us know what you think on Loop Talk, the FL Studio users forum. Until next time, enjoy FL Studio 12.1.